back to Maranatha Kids Church. We miss you so much and we hope you guys are having a fun time watching these videos. And we hope to see you super soon. But until then, we hope you guys enjoy this video as well. And now we're going to get into worship. Can you guys help me with worship? Of course! Yes. Yeah! Malachi, can you pray? Sure. All right, kids, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Jesus, stand for this day, my Lord God. I pray that you use us to worship and to use the kids. In Jesus' name, amen.
God bless you everyone. Welcome to Maranatha Kids Church. Here we are again. Things are still looking kind of weird outside. People doing crazy things. The government doesn't know this virus thing. It just seems like everything is, is making us scared, fearful. As we've been learning, God's with us. Where is God? Well, we've been finding where God is. But all this is a beautiful story God's telling us because he's made us to be fearless. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has given us not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. God loves you. Let's look at the story in the Bible. There's two characters we're going to look at today that exemplify how fearless is meant to be in our lives. The kingdom had been split. There was a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. The northern kingdom said they served God, but there was compromise. And then the king went and married a lady from Phoenicia. Now these folks were just bad as all bad. They thought it was okay to kill kids. They thought it was okay to worship false gods. And she wanted to bring that into Israel, who was already kind of compromised. But there was a man of God who stood up to her, Elijah and said, no, we serve God. This is what God wants. This is what, the, God has not called us to do this. This lady got so mad, she killed the whole school of prophets. So there was only two of these guys left. And he said, you know what? You wanna be that way? God said, it's not gonna rain. And for three years, it didn't rain in the whole kingdom. Now you talking about uncomfortable, no water, no food, but God provided for Elijah. Toward the end of that three years, God told Elijah to go to Ahab, who was the king who married this lady, and said, you know what, let's have a contest. I'm the only guy here that's representing Yahweh, the true God. You got 450 prophets of Baal, 250 prophetesses of, of Ashtaroth. Let's have a contest. Let's go to Mount Carmel in three days, bring everybody together, and we're gonna find out who really is God so we know who to serve. We can't, we can't wiggly wally. We, we have to make a decision. Are we going to serve God or Baal? They got up on, the, on there, 700 people over here, and the, the winner would be the one whose God brought fire down and burned the offering. The prophets of Baal were, hey, oh, they cut themselves, oh, please, please, send fire, send fire, show us your power. Elijah, showing that God has a sense of humor, Maybe not talking loud enough. He might be in the bathroom, you know? Or maybe he's asleep. Yell a little louder. Needless to say, Baal didn't send fire down. Elijah, even though there'd been a drought, the ground was dry. He poured water on top of the bull on top of, that was on top of the altar. So much water that it filled a trench he dug around it. It's a lot of water. It was soaking wet. And Elijah said, God, show them who you are. God sent fire down and consumed that, that offering right there. And the people realized who Yahweh was, the God. And so they, 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 they massacred these false prophets who had been leading them astray. They made a choice to serve God. Elijah was by himself, similar to what we are now. But he stood for God and trusted God had his back. He was fearless in that situation. Well, needless to say, people went and turned against God again. Elijah's successor, Elisha, came along. Now, Elisha still served God. He did everything God wanted him to do. And he said, you know, God, these people aren't doing the right thing, but you love them because they're your people. And he told the king of Israel, hey, don't go there. The king of Syria is going to try to kill you. Twice he saved the king of Israel's life. Not Ahab, but a new one. And the king of Syria got mad. Who's telling my story? Who's the traitor? Who in here? He's going to kill everybody in his house because he thinks somebody's telling his secrets. Nobody's supposed to know but the people in his house he's going to kill the king of Israel. So I said, no, it's a man of God that's telling them. He got together his army. Let's go down there and kill that guy. He got together his big army. They come down. They surrounded the house where the man of God was. One of the servants woke up. Uh, 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 master, why are you sleeping? Look who's out in the yard. What are you bothering me for? Master, look at all these soldiers. What are we going to do? Do you not see? God, please help this guy see what I see. He opens the servant's eyes. God does. 
and he sees just armies of heavenly hosts that God sent to protect them surrounding more than the enemy had sent to kill them that is fearless and you know why he was fearless because he saw God we can see God even in this God's making a beautiful story out of your life right now you know who he is what is it that God the question what is it that God did not that God gave us It's not fear. God called us to be fearless, like the song said. The darkest night, the crashing waves, is a spirit of power he's given you, of love and a mind that can discern what's him and what's not. And as we're looking at the, all these evil things, these crazy things, there's a time God calls us to repentance and judgment. But there's a time when God says, look, just stand for me. I got your back. And he'll open your eyes and let you see what he's got going on. But even if you don't see it, be fearless to God. God loves you. And if you don't know who God is, first thing you got to do is admit, you know what, I'm a sinner. I sin. I have to ask God for forgiveness. You believe that Jesus took your place. The punishment for sin is death. And Jesus took that death for us. But he rose again. And we confess him as our Lord. He's cleansed us and made us righteous before God. And he's our Lord of our life. And we're going to follow him. And we're going to do what God wants us to do. That's what you do to know him. And that's how you can be fearless no matter what comes. God bless you. We love you. Rise ahead may be unknown. Test that baby unseen road, God, you're with me. Every hidden sacrifice through the washes of the night, God, you're with me. Through it all I know, I am not alone, I am fearless. Sets my heart to what you've done and who you are, God. You're for me. Every heart and heaven's tale, I will see your faithfulness, God. You are for me, for me. I am fearless in your presence. The crashing waves, no fear when the cost is great, no fear in the midnight hour. He's giving me a spirit of power, no fear in the crashing waves, no fear when the cost is great, no fear in the midnight hour. He's giving me a spirit of power. power. No, I'm not afraid. I am fearless in your presence. So all around me, all around me, in my weakness, <laughs> your strongest, you surround me, you surround me. That's all, folks.